Hello, welcome to another trades training video. I'm Joe Carswell, and this is another lesson in our wall framing series. In this lesson, we're going to cover headers, the different materials they're made out of, and different ways they're put together to make them work. So let's get right into it. Whether our wall has a rough opening for a window, as in here, or a door rough opening, either one needs a header. This is a load-bearing exterior wall. There's a double top plate that will take a lot of weight. That weight needs to be carried down through our cripple studs. Then that weight's carried to our header. This important part of this rough opening is basically a bridge or a beam. It will transfer all of that load to either side of our rough opening, down our jack and king studs, all the way down to our bottom plate. This particular piece is specially engineered and it has to be considered. There's a lot of different materials we can use to make this header. Let's take a look at some of those. To start with, we have dimensional lumber. You might see a header built out of any stock lumber size, whether that's a two by four, two by six, two by eight, two by 10, or two by 12. If you need a stronger header, you might see an engineered material. Our engineered materials would be our stranded lumber and stranded lumber is gives us the ability to make that piece any size we need it. A lot of our larger spans will require these uh, engineered materials. We have some advantages with things like stranded lumber. We can make this material straighter, we can make it stronger, and we can make it more dimensionally stable than our natural or dimensional lumber that we talked about before. Another, ver another material variation would be laminated lumber. You see an LVL here. This is basically uh, highly engineered plywood. These are super strong, super straight, and they can carry a lot of load and they don't shrink or swell like our standard dimensional lumber does. You'll see a lot of these in the larger spans as well. You might see a glue lamb as a header. These are sort of a good looking option for an engineered material. This is a two by six stack of lumber that's been glued and pressed together into one large beam. These can be exposed. They have the look of natural wood and you'll see these in very long spans. They become very heavy, but they also have that ability to carry a ton of weight. Another cool material is an insulated header. You might take some of this engineered material like your stranded lumber and laminate it with foam board. This now gives us the ability to insulate this space as well as providing structural support. There are some general rules about headers that we need to follow when we're installing them. One is board orientation. And no matter what kind of material you're using, a board is always stronger when we load it from the edge than when we load it from the face. So this board will bend or deflect much quicker in this direction than it will in this direction. If we follow that rule when we install our headers, we end up with a much stronger build. Sometimes one board is not enough strength for our header. We can multiply those layers of boards to make a stronger header. There's a type of header called a sandwich header that does just that. What you're looking at here is a site-built sandwich header. You can see the layers. You have, uh, this is just standard dimensional lumber, two by sixes. You have two layers of two by sixes with a half inch of OSB in between the two of them. This is all nailed together. This becomes our header or our beam in our rough opening. And the benefit of this type of header is it's solid, it's strong, it's simple to be made on site, and it gets the job done. This is two layers. The half inch OSB in between them creates an overall dimension of three and a half inches. This is a great sandwich header for a two by four wall. If you remember, your wall would be three and a half inches deep, so this would flush out to the front and the back of the wall. That's going to max out and create enough nailing surface on that wall to fasten other materials later without the header sticking out too far on either side. If you had a two by six wall, a sandwich header would be made with three layers with half inch OSB in between each one of those two bys. That would give you a total depth of that or thickness of that header to be five and a half inches. If you remember your two by six depth, that matches that five and a half inch depth. 
you flush out the header on both sides, you have a strong situation. If you wanted to, you could change the dimensions of the two by from a two by six to a shallower two by four or a deeper two by eight, two by 10 or two by 12. And that would add strength to this header. Our solid headers were invented originally to fit in the wall well. They flush out with the front surface of the wall and the back surface of the wall as far as our framing goes. We can nail materials over them. They don't stick out, they don't show. Plenty of solid nailing surface as well. The problem is, is these are not energy efficient. There's a lot of heat transfer through this solid material and modern building sort of demands that we provide open spaces inside of that wall, even where our header is, to insulate, to prevent that heat loss or heat transfer. So a box header is the first kind of design that offers some of that empty space that we can insulate. What you see here is a simple box header, which has this hollow place inside of it that can be insulated. Now you can do a two by four wall depth uh, box header, and that is done this way. You could also do a two by six box header. That is just changing those top and bottom parts to a two by six. That gives you still that flushed out front and back surface, but it gives you that sort of empty cavity inside that then can be insulated. A much more efficient, energy efficient design. Hi, sorry for the interruption. I had a quick message for you. We offer a lot of other lessons at our learning portal, which is tradeskillsu.com. If you're a teacher and you found us here, we have a ton of other resources to help you with your students teach them construction in a digital environment. You can find those at teachconstruction.org. Once again, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. What you're seeing here in headers is kind of the evolution of building. We started with sandwich headers, they're solid. Uh, they kind of evolved into box headers, which had some empty space in them to insulate. What you're seeing here is a single ply header. This is a newer idea. We're adding even more space to insulate. You can think of a single ply header as almost an open box header. So if you take out one of the sides, you now have a lot more space to insulate and even access to that space to insulate it before you even, or after you build the header. What you see there is a cutaway or a section detail of that particular header. If you were to take a wall or that particular wall and cut right down the middle of it and look at it from the side, this is what you would see. And following that drawing, you have your double top plate, that's your cap plate, your top plate together. You also see your cripple, and now you have an upper header plate that's placed flat. Then you have your single ply header, which is the vertical part. Then you have your lower header plate. All of that carries the weight down to your jack studs and your king studs, then continues down the wall. In this illustration, you can really see that open space that's created for insulating. We can push that single ply header to the outside of the wall, to the exterior, or it can be pushed to the inside of the wall, depending on how, on how the plans are spec. It doesn't change the strength or weight bearing of that header, but what it does is gives us that space to insulate, which makes this a much more energy efficient design. Another rule about headers has to do with the relationship between the length of the span of the header from one side of the roof opening to the other and the depth or height of that header that's made. On our model here, we have a very large opening. This could be a garage door, say on a house. And what you see here is a much deeper header than anywhere else on this model. That is because you have a much longer span. The job of this header is much bigger. We have a lot of area here that has to carry a lot more load. So this has to be engineered to carry that load. One way to do that is to increase the height or the depth of this beam. Right along with that rule about a deeper header for longer spans comes the number of jacks and kings that have to be added to support that larger header. And in this case, and to a certain point, we have to add, say, up to two, three, even four jacks and king studs to carry that larger beam and ultimately more weight from above. So headers are not arbitrary. A framer does not decide what parts to put where as far as headers go. They're designed, they, an engineer would have to approve them, and they have to meet code. And this is a set of rules that we follow when we're building. Here you see a chart that shows you 
the size or depth of the beams that can be used for specific spans, and also the number of layers that will achieve a certain span as well. So the bottom line is the smaller the rough opening span, the smaller materials we can use and the less layers of them. With a larger span, we need deeper materials and we also need more layers of them to get the job done. One last thing to talk about when we're looking at headers is the placement of that header in the wall. There's a couple of different variations we can have. One would be putting that header right above the rough opening so that the bottom of that header defines the top of our rough opening. That's kind of the old school way to do it. A more modern method would be to raise that header up to make contact with our top plate. What I have here is an example of a drop header. This is where my header is set to the top edge of my rough opening that defines my top edge. And now all of the weight that bears on this double top plate has to carry down our studs on layout. So the other way to do this would be to raise that header up. And what I have here is the header with full contact with my double top plate. All of my weight is carried very quickly from that top plate over to the jacks and kings and carried down all the way to the bottom plate. But we're not done yet. We have to define that top edge of our rough opening. We do that with framing that's non-structural. So you see a horizontal piece there. And then we also need a small vertical piece that would carry out our layout all the way across. One thing to notice on this particular high header is the height of the jack studs. Don't forget that the jacks need to support the header itself. So they carry all the way up to the bottom of this header. They don't stop here where you might think they should be. So there you have it. One of our most important parts of our wall frame, the header, all of the materials we use, the types, the positioning of the header in the wall, all that comes together to make sure we can carry all that weight from above down to the bottom properly and have a wall that's sound. I hope that makes sense. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.